I'm 10 years old and I take my seat to begin the ERBs, one of my first experiences with standardized testing. Before I go to open the booklet, I have to fill out this little bubble sheet to identify myself. So I'm going through and filling out the bubbles with my name, the date, et cetera. And then towards the bottom of the page, I get to the section labeled race. I start to go down the list. Hispanic, no. Asian, no. Native Pacific Islander, no. Black African American, I mean, Egypt is in Africa, but no. OK, so I guess I have to check white. But I don't think my skin looks white, not as white as some of my classmates, at least. For example, when I was younger and wanted to color a self-portrait, I never grabbed a peach colored pencil like a lot of my white classmates did, but I'd always grabbed a tan one. I call over my teacher and ask her which box I should check. She, a white woman, says, it doesn't really matter, just check white. OK, so I guess I'm white. I know that I'm not alone in the experience of not always having a box to check. Hi, my name is Scarlett Aldaev, and I am half white and half Egyptian. But according to the US Census, this means that I am fully white. You see, the US Census, along with most colleges, employers, and any organization that will ever ask you to check a race box, sees people from MENA descent, that is, Middle Eastern and North African descent, as white. This means that, officially, people from Lebanon, Egypt, Iran, and many other MENA countries do not fall under their own category of race, but rather they fall under this greater category of whiteness. Although the topic of race is complicated when it comes to people of MENA descent, with factors like skin color, religion, and culture playing a role in how such a diverse set of people are perceived, I, along with many other MENA people in this country, would argue that it is time that this country stop erasing MENA people and add a MENA descent box to the census in order to validate our identities and remove us from this greater category of whiteness, with which most of us do not identify. But first, what exactly is race and what exactly is whiteness? Race, as opposed to ethnicity, which strictly traces your heritage, is a social construct used to classify people based off of their appearance and perception by others. When determining one's race, a number of factors play a role. Primarily, of course, is the way one sees themselves, and their ethnic makeup often plays a large role in the way they racially identify themselves. The way one is perceived by others, however, also plays a large role in the race that they belong to, as race is a social construct used to identify and organize people. Whiteness is a racial identity of privilege, and being white in the United States means you'll go through life with certain advantages that others won't. Although whiteness is typically thought to only include those with European descent, the US Census includes people with North African and Middle Eastern ancestry as well. By including MENA people in this category, however, whiteness becomes a catch-all for people who can't check a different box, centering white people as the default. When Middle Eastern and North African people were first immigrating to the United States, many actually tried desperately to attach themselves to whiteness in order to be naturalized to enjoy full rights of citizenship. So in the 1940s, the United States officially recognized MENA people as white. After 9-11, however, the rise of Islamophobia centered Middle Eastern people in the news and became closely intertwined with the discrimination that many MENA people face today. Because many Americans correlate being Arab with being Muslim, the discrimination that these two groups face cannot be separated. How racial and religious discrimination are closely intertwined for many people in the US complicates the topic of race, especially for MENA people who do not identify with Islam. Connection with culture, especially language, can also complicate racial identity for many MENA people. A common instance in which discrimination occurs, for example, is when MENA people are speaking Arabic in public especially in airports or on planes. Because many MENA people are often racially ambiguous, visible connections with culture, i.e. clothing, religious garments, etc., can also influence the way MENA people are perceived and therefore the way that they are treated. How each individual person is treated influences how they identify, leading some MENA people to racially identify differently than others. For me, personally, all these factors have greatly influenced the way I see my own race. My Egyptian family is Coptic, so I'm not Muslim, and I do not experience Islamophobia, which for many people is deeply tied to the discrimination that they face. I also don't speak Arabic, so I do not experience a lot of the cultural discrimination that many MENA people face. 
For these reasons, I sometimes feel as though I'm less allowed to identify as Middle Eastern. Because I'm half white, I'm often white passing, which further complicates my relationship with my race. In the summer, for instance, I look a lot more Egyptian than I do in the winter. Because of my sometimes racially ambiguous appearance and my Egyptian last name, I often get the classic, what are you, or where are you from, especially when people first meet me. I encounter some people who view me as white and others who do not. These recurrences, along with countless perspectives on my race from those around me, shape the way I view my own race. When asked to classify myself by race, I often struggle. When entering high school, for example, we are split up into POC and white students for conversations around race as a part of the orientation programming. My first dilemma on this forum was when I came across a multiracial box that I could check. Am I multiracial? I mean, Middle Eastern is not technically a race that is not white in the United States, so no. But at the same time, when asked to describe my family, I always refer to my white side and my Egyptian side. So wouldn't that inherently imply that my Egyptian side is not white? I considered. Well, if someone were half white and half of any other race, they would be considered multiracial and not white. Finally, terrified of offending anyone with my presence in a POC space, and at the same time cognizant of the ways in which I benefit from white privilege, I ended up checking the white box because I felt it was the safest option. Nonetheless, if Middle Eastern was officially recognized by the United States as a race, I probably would have felt a lot more comfortable checking the non-white or multiracial boxes, even if, because of my white privilege, I probably would not have gone so far to call myself POC or BIPOC. On the rare occasion that there is a Middle Eastern box that I can check, I always breathe a sigh of relief. For me, checking both the Middle Eastern and the white boxes just feels a lot more comfortable and validating. And I know that many others will also feel that their identities are more validated by adding this box to the census. This validation of identity and, albeit long overdue, recognition of MENA people in this country is absolutely necessary. But it is not the sole reason for adding this box to the census. Adding a MENA descent box to the census would also remove MENA people from whiteness. According to a study published by the National Academy of Sciences earlier this year, the vast majority of MENA people do not view themselves as white. Further, a substantial portion of white people don't view MENA people as white either. If race is defined by the way we are perceived and the way we perceive ourselves, and MENA people are both seen and see themselves as not white, then there is no reason why MENA people should fall under white on the census. Further, without recognition on the census, there's no direct way to count the number of MENA people in this country, and therefore it is much harder to conduct research on the population, leaving the demographic unrecognized and unaccounted for. Additionally, by adding this box to the census, it would open a dialogue on how Middle Eastern and North African people are actually being treated in the US. This would not only validate the identities and feelings of many MENA people, but it would also validate the experiences of discrimination that they face. Adding a Middle Eastern and North African box to the United States Census, a simple and easy procedural change, would be the first step in finally recognizing and uplifting MENA people in this country. And there is, in fact, a chance. The Biden administration confirms that it has revived an effort to re-examine the ways in which the United States Census asks about race and ethnicity. This provides some hope that on the 2030 Census, a Middle Eastern or North African box may finally appear. Of course, this would only be a first step in finally recognizing and uplifting MENA people in this country, but the significance of this action is huge, as it would make so many more MENA people feel more recognized in a country that has historically completely ignored their presence. Thank you.